When the tantrums don't stop, a lot of parents resort to the timeout chair. Or the corner, the timeout corner. Wherever you got there, mm -hmm. it's timeout for you. And it gives the child and the parents a minute to calm down and process. But how do you know if putting your child in timeout is really effective? Therapist Ryan Jensen says there is definitely a right and a wrong way to do timeouts. You actually believe timeout should be a last resort. Oh, absolutely. Really, all research shows that um, if we want to change behavior, we look at the positive pro approaches first. So we look at how do we validate the kid? How do we reinforce the child? And as a parent, all of our goals is to make our children successful. And so timeout we use when the child maybe has a behavior. It's a tool we can use to help them have more successful behavior. We can start talking about this positive thing, and I can see how a timeout could detract from that. It's sort of this punishment, and you're, you're yelling, mm -hmm. get a timeout exactly. for you. What do you think is, are the good elements in a positive home environment? Well, you know, a positive home environment is one where we have a high ratio of praise. When I've been on before, we've talked about that ratio of eight to one. We give eight praises, eight reinforcers for every correct we have to give the child which is really difficult even for the most positive parent and then we're always looking at how do we showcase the strengths our parent our children have how do we highlight what they do well and then again always looking for things to reinforce focusing on what our kids do right not what they do wrong at the end of the day though sometimes those positive approaches don't change behavior or don't get the behavior you're hoping to coach and to mm -hmm. teach is that when timeout can be effective exactly that's when we use a tool like timeout and timeout again it is a tool to help the kid have more successful behavior in the future timeout really is most effective when we use it with small children, so toddlers, preschoolers, because they um, have a more difficult time understanding or using reasoning skills. And so that's re really our prime, um, prime age to use timeout. So my 18-year-old's happy to hear this right now. I, I won't <laughs> yeah. put him in timeout anymore. No, You've got some, other tools for him. Yeah. You've got some good keys to help us make these effective timeouts. The first one you say is to choose a behavior. Is that that mm -hmm. we're going to associate with the timeout? Exactly. A lot of times parents think the timeout can be a catch-all for every poor behavior the child has. And the reality is if we want it to be effective, we focus on one behavior the child is really struggling with. And we have a better likelihood of it working when we focus on that. And then we're not overusing it. Anytime we overuse timeout, it's not effective. If you're finding yourself putting your child in timeout 10, 12 times a day, that's not the effective tool to change that child's behavior. So you pick one behavior, you mm -hmm. just you, you assign rather timeout yeah. as the punishment for that behavior and you focus mm -hmm. on that until the behavior improves? Yeah, well you're looking at that is going to be the consequence for whatever the action that child is. Again, okay. after you've done all the positives, we're setting it up to be a positive approach first. Right. You also encourage parents to pick a spot where timeout happens. Why does this matter? Why can't it happen wherever you happen to be? Well, I'm never a fan of fly by the seat of our parents parenting, especially <laughs> when we're trying to correct behavior, but we all do it. But if we know where the child is going to go, it makes it easiest for us to implement the timeout. The other thing we want to look at is timeout really needs to be a timeout from stimulus, from reinforcement, from attention. And so we want to pick a place that essentially is boring and that they're not getting validation they're not having the other kids in the home laugh at them and feed feed into that behavior so we want to pick a place really boring really free from stimulus and reinforcement it was always the laundry room in my house for that very reason every it's house is boring <laughs> yeah yeah but everybody when it's more effective too the kid can predict they know when it's time out this is where it is and fold those towels while you're in there too you know okay <laughs> so we got the behavior specific behavior we've got a specific spot should there be a specific time or can it be varying depending depending on the, the kid and the behavior and different things? You know, really recommendations say that timeout can start about age two and you use a minute per age. Now again, timeout's more effective with small children. Um, for a 12 year old, 12 minutes of timeout, not so effective. And so we look at a minute per age when they're younger, always set a timer. Parents, we're busy, we put the kid in timeout, we answer a phone call, we check our email, use a timer, use your phone, use your kitchen timer. You talk about not being a fan of fly, fly by the seat parenting, which I think mm -hmm. a lot of parents unfortunately fall into that mm -hmm. trap of. How important is consistency when it comes to a tool like timeout. Um, when we're talking about how do we make it effective, it is consistency. The kid needs to be able to predict when I do this, I'm going to be in timeout 100% of the time, whether mom's here, whether dad's here, whether grandma's here. This is going to be the consequence when I do that. So we have to be consistent. And by the same token, we want to be consistent with our praise. The child needs to know if I do the good things, if mom and dad notice I'm really helping out, I'm going to get praise and reinforcement for that. So consistency key. I'll tell you one of my problems is as I'm not very consistent, and I do like the threatening thing, because I hate to actually follow through with the timeout. Say, if you do oh, that yeah, one more time, hard. you're going to get a timeout. And I threaten them whether I actually uh -huh. follow you through or not. You threaten them with the timeout. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or you yeah. threaten them. That could be it, too. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it well, good, bad, Well, you know, really, when we threaten timeout, most threats we know are idle threats. So we're saying, if you do this, we're trying to shape the behavior. But if we're being consistent, we want to, again, 100% of the time the kid does it, there's not a second chance they get, they get the consequence. Once you've finished timeout, once the timer's gone off or that mm -hmm. a lot of 
of time that you've established ahead of time has ran out or expired, what do you do at that point? You know, really, I like to just end the timeout and say timeout is finished. Some people like to process. Uh, the approach that I've seen successful in families I work with is just saying timeout is over or timeout is finished, and then you're immediately looking for things in your environment that the child is doing right to shape future behavior, saying the minute they start helping, I like the way you're helping your sister. I like the way you're keeping your hands and your feet to yourself and reinforcing right when timeout ends. So then the child learns to get mom and dad's attention. This is what I've got to do. Also, sometimes it's not just about the child getting a timeout. Sometimes it all comes down to other contraptions, electronics and stuff mm -hmm. that come into it. Explain that, how that works. Yeah, you know, you talked about your 18-year-old son. All teenagers I know, the cell phone, the car, electronics, they have a lot of power. So sometimes where we can't physically time out a child, we look at um, objects, toys, favorite items that we might be able to time out instead. Also a big pa fan of the parent timeout. When you're losing your cool, you run to the bathroom, you do something, but get yourself out of that situation before you have a negative interaction with the child. Good advice, and, and I think a good reminder to parents to look for that positive, like you said, that 8 to 1 ratio, yeah. to really play up the positive during the day when you can and let time out be a tool that's a last resort. For sure. Thanks, Ryan, so much. Okay, thank you. You can find Ryan's complete article for making time out effective on our website.